What's up YouTube friends? Now before I get to the video, I have a little fabric unboxing I'd like to do first. A subscriber and friend over on Facebook hit me up and asked if I'd like some fabric. I asked her if she had a link or a store she'd like me to promote and she said no that she just wanted to send it. So I said, of course. I will never, ever turn down fabric. Now I've had this box a couple days sitting in my sewing room and I just now got to it so I'd like to show you what she gave me. So the first thing that I saw in the box was this. Now actually I did see this on her Facebook page. She made the pillow covers right behind me here, my outdoor ones, and she used this fabric for her own and I just fell in love with it. So I commented on it. Now I'm an outdoorsy boy so it has bears, lake scenes, deer, and trout. And like I said, I just fell in love with this fabric. So we have two of these little throw pillows down here in the basement, and that's what I plan on making covers out of this for these. Now I haven't gotten around to measuring exactly how much she got me, so this is probably around two yards, I'd say. The next thing in this box is this very soft blue camo lining material. She also gave me it in pink. And I actually just got rid of a stocking hat like this. I sold some of my hunting stuff. And it was this material on one side, it was reversible, and then on the other side, it was orange fleece. So I could probably make a few hats out of this. And like I said, it is very soft. I just keep petting it. Here's a little note that she left me. Thank you. The next thing is this white cotton. And there's quite a bit here. I don't know if you can see it, but there's quite a bit here. And actually, especially at my Walmart during this whole fiasco, white fabric was very hard to come by. Now this would be great for a lining or anything. I always could use some plain white fabric. The next thing is this flannel print. There's about a yard here. And I absolutely love this print also. So what I plan on doing is making a few rustic stockings to hang up on our bar over there. And I'll definitely do a video when I do that. The next thing in the box was a couple yards of this cotton fabric. It kind of has like a branch, tree branch theme. And she actually messaged me and said that this glows in the dark. Now this is going to look great as a backing for any Halloween table topper or just in a block. I think it'd be pretty cool to walk out in your dining room table and see some of it glowing. Then she gave me a few yards of this sweatshirt camo material. Now I actually have a pattern for a hoodie. So this is actually great. I never really find hoodies my size. I'm a pretty big boy and I have legs for days and a big booty. So I always like my hoodies and my shirts to go past my rear end. Now in order to do that, I have to upsize my shirts a size or two and then they're always way too big and I can't stand that. So I'm gonna make one for myself that fits me perfectly. And finally, she sent me about four yards of camel fleece. And also this pattern. Alright guys, so that's everything in the box. Another very big thank you for all this fabric. So now, let's get to the video. Alright guys, so this is a perfect project to do for a beginner. It's really simple and really easy. And it can be pretty inexpensive. For me, it was free. But if you use one of your Hobby Lobby coupons or your Joanne Fabric coupons, get four yards, you're good to go. Now, if you wanted the front and the back different, you would just need to get two yards of each fabric. Now, there are many different ways that you could finish off these blankets. Today, I'm just going to sew it. It's the easiest for me, but you could also tie it if you wanted to. Now, personally, I do not like the look of the tied ones, especially when you're napping with it and you're rolling around on those knots. Not comfortable for me. There's also a crochet method that you could do around the outside of this, but I want this to be fast, easy, and quick. So the first thing I did was go ahead and I folded my fabric in half with the right sides touching. And now I'm just going to go around and make sure that my edges match up. The sides should be fine, but right here where it was cut off the bolt might be a little wonky. So what you can do just to even that up, get it lined up as best as you can, and then just take some scissors and cut a nice straight line here at the bottom. And that's what I'm going to do. And while I'm making sure that my edges are even, I'm going to start in the middle and make sure everything lays nice and flat. But you don't want to stretch fleece. Fleece is pretty stretchy. 
if it does get stretched when you're sewing it and stuff, it'll just have weird little lumps and puckers and bubbles in your fabric and it won't look as pretty as it could be. And I'm also going to go around and I'm going to pin heavily around the sides. Not only will the fleece stretch, but it also has a tendency to slip and slide around on itself. So just to be sure, heavy on the pins. So I'm just checking to make sure that my sides are even, which these ones are, and then stick a pin. And I'm going to go about every hand width away just to make sure that nothing moves on me. All right, so I pinned all the way around my quilt except for right here, and this was the cut edge. So now I'm just going to square this off and make it even. Now you could just eyeball this, that's just fine, but I'm going to use my ruler and a piece of chalk and I'm going to make a straight line all the way across. And then just using my fabric scissors, hack it off. And now I just want to pin this side closed also, but I'm going to leave about an 8 to 10 inch opening here at the bottom. So I'm going to stick a pin right here, and actually I'm going to stick two, just so I know to stop there. And then, like I said, 8 to 10 inches, and I'm probably going to do 10 inches. This is quite a bit of fabric to pull through that opening. And then just go ahead and finish pinning. And now I'll just meet you over at the sewing machine, and we'll get this puppy sewed together. All right, guys, so I'm over here at the sewing machine. Today I'll be using a straight stitch and I actually went ahead and put on my walking foot, but it's not necessary. And I'm going to go bump up my length to a 3.5 and that's where I'm going to start at. You want a longer length on your stitch because this is quite a bit of fabric. And I'm also going to do quite a large seam allowance. Now I'm going to do an inch and a half. That's just what I'm going to do. You could go down to an inch or even a half inch if that's how you feel comfortable. I'm going to do an inch and a half. So I'm just going to line my fabric right along this gray piece right here. Now on my corners, I went ahead and I marked an inch and a half up with some chalk. That way I know where to turn. And don't forget to back stitch at the beginning and the end. And just keep sewing. All right, so I'm coming up to my chalk line and I'm gonna stop with my needle right on the chalk line. I'm gonna stop with my needle down, raise my presser foot and spin. And just so. I'm coming up to my final pin, so don't forget to backstitch. All right guys, so the next thing I did before I turned it inside out was I went and I clipped the bulk on the corners and then I went ahead and turned it inside out. Now you do wanna be very careful at this step because it's very, very easy to stretch this all wonky and you're not gonna get a nice flat seam here. Because I did leave that 10 inch opening, it was pretty easy, but you just still wanna be careful. So now I'm just gonna give it a little bit of a tug and throw some pins. just like that. So now I'm just going to take this back over to my sewing machine and I'm going to sew this opening closed. Now you can hand sew it if you prefer, but I'm going to use that same straight stitch. I believe I'm going to have my length at a three and I'm going to sew about an eighth inch to a quarter inch. I'll start right here before this pin and then I'll just sew all the way around and then stop a little bit after this pin and back stitch. Now I'm using a cream colored thread today 
If you want it to really disappear, you're going to want to use a coordinating thread. But honestly, once you wash it and it puffs back up, you're really not going to see it. All right, guys, so it should look like that. And even with that cream colored thread, you still really can't even see it. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this out into the living room and I'm going to make sure that everything is nice and flat. And I want my seams all pushed out and nice and flat and not kind of folded over kind of like that. You don't want that. So the next step is we're going to tie this together. Now this part is optional. You don't have to do it, but I always like to do it. When you throw this in the wash machine, the two fabrics will come apart. Especially with fleece, one side doesn't stretch, but the other side is really stretchy. So if you were to take a big, heavy, wet blanket out of the wash machine, there's a great chance that you're going to pop some threads. Now I went ahead and I put little pieces of paper everywhere where I want a tie. So there's one right here, one right here. So today I'll just be using my black crochet thread and, you probably can't see it, a ribbon needle. And this just has a larger eye on it. So I'm just going to zoom you in closer and we'll tie a couple of these together. So all you're going to want to do is get your needle and thread. I'm going to go through both layers. I'm going to come up about a quarter or a half an inch away from where I went in. Next, I'm going to tie a loop twice and pull it tight. And you don't want to pull it so tight that it puckers. And then just loop it two more times. And then you can pull it tight. That's it, that's it. And then you just want to clip it off, leaving a quarter to a half inch thread tail. All right, and I know this is kind of hard to see with black thread on this fabric, but I'm going to do it one more time. So you're going to want to make sure you go through both layers. Come up a quarter or a half inch away. We're going to loop it twice. And pull. Loop it two more times. And then just pull it tight. All right, guys, so the next step is, and our final step is, I'm going to add a little faux binding onto here. So I'll be using a three quarter inch seam allowance. So if you make one of these for yourself, you can kind of feel there's a bulky knot where the four layers of fabric are. And we just want to go on this side of it. So like I said, I'll be using a three quarter inch seam allowance and my length is a 3.5. So don't forget to backstitch at the beginning and the end. And just keep sewing. All right, so I'm coming up to my end. I'm just gonna use my ruler here to kind of guesstimate where I need to stop. So I'm gonna stop with my needle down, raise my presser foot and spin. And actually I need to go forward a little bit more. and you can see that you get a nice faux border here. So I'm going to finish up the rest of this. Don't forget to backstitch at the end and I'll show you what it looks like when I'm all finished. And here is my finished blankie. Now this measures about 62 inches wide by 88 inches long. So she actually gave me more fabric than I even thought. And this will keep me nice and warm when I'm in my room with the air conditioner cranked to zero playing Animal Crossing. I hope you give this video a try. If you like this video and want to see more of my videos, 
go down below and hit that big red subscribe button and give this video a big thumbs up. If you have a question about this video or any of my other videos, or I'd just like to leave a suggestion for a future upcoming video, leave me a comment. Head on over to my Etsy page at Scrappy's Patch if you'd like to see what I'm selling over there. You can also friend me over on Facebook if you'd like to share crafting pictures and ideas. I always love to see what you guys are doing. You're all very creative. Check out all my other links down below if you'd like to support this channel. And as always, thanks for watching, happy sewing, and I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.